Well, good morning, good morning, and it's time for Cup of Hope. Today, I wanted to start by asking you a question about love. Have you ever done something or been in a situation where you have responded to someone that you're in relationship with or maybe even a stranger in a way that you knew that what you said, the words that came out of your mouth or the the behavior, the actions, they were not you. It was almost as if the Spirit of God took over and spoke through you, gave you words, gave you the ability to, to act in a, and behave in a certain way that was beyond your current capability. I believe that the Spirit of God is alive and active in us, and this is exactly what we have been learning and talking about in 2 Peter chapter 1 that the Spirit of God gives us everything that we need to live a life that is honoring and glorifying to God. And in so doing, His Spirit in, enables us as we access it, as we, we become more aware of God's presence in our life. There will be times in our life where, where we'll be in a conversation and, and minutes later, an hour later, we'll look back and go, what just happened? Like that was definitely God speaking through me, definitely God acting through me. I think those moments are moments that we need to uh, kind of draw a circle around or or identify in our lives, Not, not just again, just brush through and hurry on to the other aspects of our life, but really Uh, be grateful for them, be uh, amazed by them, because the truth of the matter is that God didn't come for the perfect. The good news of the gospel is not for those who are already perfect, who are already walking in and speaking every word in that's, you know, perfect and tidied up with a pretty little bow on top and all of our lives look like that. The gospel is not for the perfect. The gospel is for the ragamuffin. And this, as I was reading today, it just reminded me of Brendan Manning's book that came out like a long time ago. I think even when I was in middle school called The Ragamuffin the Ragamuffin Gospel. And it's this whole idea of this very thing that the, the gospel, the good news is not for the, the perfect God isn't coming for people. He's not expecting us to have it all together. Otherwise, like, why would we need him, right? Why would we need the message of the gospel if we already had everything kind of ironed out and put together? We need Jesus because we have places that we need to grow in our life, areas that need to be healed and mended. Uh, There are things that need to be made and set right in us. And yet, even in the midst of those things, even in the midst of all of the imperfection that is still alive and well in us, as we grow through life, we mature, we become we, we become uh, more wise and, and gain knowledge, we, our behavior changes. As we grow in Christ, we become more like him. But even in the midst of the, the beginning stages, when we're still a major work in progress and we will never fully arrive, those we uh, early years of our life, God can still use us. He still works through us. And those are the times I think that it's like you, you go through a situation and then you're, you really are just encouraged to continue pressing on in your relationship with him because you realize like, no, he is alive. He is well, he is working through me. He is enabling me and equipping me to do the things that he is calling me to do. I just have to get out of the way and let him move. I just have to get out of the way and trust him and and be a vessel for him to be to use. And that this this ragamuffin that I am, that he has called me by, by his gospel, his good news, he has called me out of the darkness and into the light so that I can then go and be a light to those around me. Now, wherever the soles of my feet will tread, that light is ushered in because God's spirit lives and dwells in me. 
So today I want you to just think about that, those moments in your life when you have been able to love people in a way, when you have been able to speak in a way, when you have uh, been able to uh, act and show up or care for a need in a way, and then afterwards the hindsight is like your mind is kind of blown. Those are the moments when God is really, really working through us. And Second um, Peter verse one, excuse me, chapter one, verse seven, B says, and to your brotherly kindness, which we talked about on Monday, add to that love. So now we have a list of eight characteristics, eight um, actions that we are working through that the Spirit of God is, is going to build up in us. These will be examples to people around us that the Spirit of God and to ourselves that the Spirit of God is, is working in us. It's the faith, the virtue, the knowledge, the self-control, um, the patient endurance, godliness, brotherly love, and then the brotherly kindness, and then the last one is love. And <clears throat> as you dig into this verse, you, you read the word agape, which I have always read or understood and from you know early in my growing up years that this word agape was specifically God's love for us that it, it was a different kind of love it wasn't the love that I have between a, a brother or sister or friend it's a godly love but what I, I missed all along uh, and it's kind of embarrassing to say that but I just thought it was like to signify that relationship that I have with God and God that God has with me it's his love poured out for me and there's there's a depth to it but as I was preparing for today it, I my eyes were enlightened to see and understand that this love it is a sacrificial love and that we can demonstrate agape love to anyone by how we love them at a level that is sacrificial. If we're loving people in a sacrificial level, that means that we are going to extremes with them, that we're meeting a need that's maybe above and beyond, right? That we're, we're touching the needs, we're touching the lives, we're touching the hearts of those around us in a way that is sacrificial. It's causing us to have to give something up. Maybe it's our home that maybe we're inviting someone to come into our home to live with us, to share common space with us. That's a sacrificial kind of love. Why? Because it's so much easier to, to not, <laughs> right? It's so much easier to not invite another personality into our home to live with us. It's so much easier to, to just you know, keep our own walls up, keep the doors closed and locked and live our own happy little existence inside of the safe bubble of our lives and not welcome other people in. But maybe God is calling us to a place where he's asking you to open up your home. I don't know what it is, that sacrificial love that God may be asking you to participate in. But what I came to understand is, again, as I was preparing for this, is that it's not just signifying, agape isn't just signifying a relationship, a specific relationship. It is describing a, a depth of love that is sacrificial a completeness of love that is sacrificial. It's the love of God for us, that he was willing to give up everything. Jesus gave up everything for us. He left the beauty, the, the, the you know, just living in, in heaven. He gave up all of that to walk the road to a cross where he knew he would have to suffer he knew he would have to love people who were going to turn him in, who were going to uh, deny him, who wouldn't love him back. And yet he chose to go to the cross anyway. That's a sacrificial kind of love. That is a, they, the most extreme example of sacrificial love. And I believe that what Peter is, is telling us here is that we too, in our daily coming and going, that there will be moments when the Spirit of God will move in us to ignite this 
sacrificial, this agape kind of love to those around us. That there may be somebody that we need to give a level of sacrificial love. It may be a family, it may be a neighbor, it may be somebody that God just brings into your life for a season and then they're moved on. And that sacrificial love that you show them will change the trajectory of their life for the rest of their living days on this earth and for all of eternity. I want to say to you today to trust the process. Trust the process. Trust the process of growth. Trust the process of the Spirit moving and working in you. Trust that God's Spirit is alive and well. And that He will equip you. He will help you to walk in faith to have self-control, to live a life of virtue, to grow in your knowledge, to have a level of patience and endurance, of brotherly kindness, and of this sort of agape sacrificial love that you never knew that you had within you because on our own we don't. But with God's spirit at work in us, we can live a life that is sacrificially uh, demonstrating the love of God for us to, to others around us. And John 13, three through, uh, excuse me, John 13, 35, I can't read my own handwriting. John 13, 35 says this, by this all men will know that you are my disciples. By this one thing, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Love, how we love one another, is the biggest indicator to those around us that God is in us. So if we hear nothing else for this last uh, couple of weeks that we've been walking through this Advent and you hear nothing else going forward and tomorrow, or excuse me, on Friday when we meet again, uh, if you hear nothing else about this whole message about the Spirit of God giving you the ability to live a life that brings glory and honor to God and that makes an impact on this world, know this. It is how we love that will be the single most profound indication that God's spirit is in us because we're going to love sacrificially in a way that is abnormal. That doesn't make sense to people. That doesn't even maybe make sense to us. It's not our normal behavior. is isn't something that we would welcome up in and of our own accord, but the spirit of God working in us to enable us to love people in a way that's beyond our capability. It's beyond our comprehension. And we can look back and, and be in awe that God chose to use this ragamuffin to carry out the mission, mission and the hope and, and demonstrate love to the world around us. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for your love. I thank you for your purposes. I thank you for your promises. I thank you that you have called us and appointed us for such a time as this. God, I pray that today you would give us reminders throughout this day that your spirit is at work, that you are moving and equipping us to do the things that you have called us to do, that it is not in and of ourselves that we are able to love people with an agape kind of love, with a sacrificial kind of love but that we are able to love people sacrificially because your spirit dwells in us. That this body, our bodies are your temple and your spirit is welcome here. I speak for myself and I know that my brothers and sisters feel the same way that your spirit is welcome here. We desire your spirit to be alive and well in us. Use us, Lord, as your vessels to carry out your kingdom purposes here on this earth. Make us usable. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen.
Thank you for being with me today on Cup of Hope. I pray that you have a blessed and wonderful day, and I look forward to seeing you back here, Lord willing, on Friday. Bye-bye.